So we'll start the first <coughs> part of the course. Um, so in the first part, we'll cover wireless mesh networks. So again, as I, uh, as I said before, uh, we'll cover the, at the beginning, we'll cover the general characteristics of this type of wireless systems. And then we'll talk about the, uh, the, the, the layers, the different layers of any mesh network node. And then we'll talk about the major uh, techniques or protocols that we need to use in each layer. For example, transport layer. Usually, the three layers that we're, go that, that we're going to cover are transport layer, uh, uh, network layer, and data link layer or MAC layer. So these are the three layers that we're going to cover for, uh, for, for the different types of networks. These uh, slides, I actually uh, am using the, uh, the slides from Ian Achildes. Uh, uh, and then I modified uh, the slides uh, to add and remove some, some material from it. How many times this course was offered? How many times this course was offered? Uh, this is, I think, the fourth time. I think, third or fourth. Okay. Uh, so to start, <coughs> wireless mesh uh, uh, networks, uh, the term wireless mesh network describes wireless networks in which, and in which each node can communicate directly with one or more peer nodes. What does that mean? This means that the normal uh, 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 wireless um, uh, uh, technology that we're used to is, for example, 3G or 4G or Wi-Fi. Uh, all these types of networks rely on uh, a centralized topology where the nodes have to uh, or must communicate to one node, which we call access point or uh, a base station in the case of 3G and so on. Okay? So always the um, the communication happens between one node, which communicates to uh, a base station or, or an access point, okay? And if there is like two nodes and they want to communicate together, I mean, the logic says that they can communicate, but using Wi-Fi technology or using cellular technology, they cannot just communicate directly. They have to eat. They have to go through the base station and, and, uh, and then from the base station to the other node, even if they are right next to each other. Okay? So wireless mesh network violates that concept fundamentally. So it says that if, uh, if you want to communicate... Oops. If you want to communicate between two nodes, you can communicate directly to the wireless node next to you. We'll talk about what is the advantage, what is the disadvantage, why people started with this centralized topology, okay? Uh, if that's the case. <clears throat> so, uh, nodes can communicate directly. What is the implication of this? Well, now each node has to be self-aware, uh, the network has to be self-organized, and each node, uh, it doesn't have to, uh, or it, 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 not only does, does it have to send its own traffic, it has to learn how to send others traffic as well. Okay? This is the main difference in mesh networks. Um, so the term mesh, originally, originally, the term mesh means what? If you have multiple points and you want to create a mesh between them, this means that each point is connected to all other points, right? That's the mesh. When we talk about wireless mesh network, this is, we, we, we actually mean a regular mesh, which means that each node in the network, it needs to communicate to more than one node, but not necessarily to all nodes. So when we talk about wireless mesh network, we do not mean necessarily that this is a complete mesh. Okay, so we have to agree on that. 
Um, so this is, of course, as I said, this is quite, this is quite different from the traditional wireless networking concept where any nodes, any two nodes want to communicate to each other, they have to go through a centralized node or a coordinator or an access point or a base station. Okay? Uh, these access points or base stations, they form an infrastructure. So I have to build an infrastructure. So when I actually say that this Wi-Fi is a wireless network, in a way, I'm lying. Why? Because this access point, at the end of the day, you can see that there is a wire, right? So it is connected through the backbone of the university network. So it's not completely wireless. Okay? So that's why this node is, is, is a heavy node. It can process a huge amount of traffic. And that's why, for this type of network architecture, the nodes have to send their traffic through the access point. If the access point is dead, then your network is dead, right? It's a, a centralized architecture. Um, <clears throat> mesh network uses a different uh, uh, fundamental or a different concept. Each node is capable of sending the traffic through a wireless link to another node. And you may actually use the concept of multi-hub, which means that your traffic will be sent, your traffic will be uh, sent from one node to another node, and then from, this is wireless, huh? And then from this node to this node. So this is the sender, and this is actually the receiver. So your traffic is going to flow in a, a wireless link, and then in another wireless link. So the advantage of this is that I did not use any infrastructure. This is totally wireless, right? The other thing is that this node I can use as a relay, which means that I can extend the range. Because in wireless, one of the, one of the challenges, of course, is the range of communication, right? So in order to uh, 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 overcome this range limitation, I can use this relay node to, a, to receive the traffic from this node and then relay the traffic to the receiver. So in that case, I can extend the range of communication without having to rely on infrastructure. I don't have to use any wired nodes at all. So this is, uh, or uh, at least it was, a revolutionary concept because um, in the past, people are familiar with one type of network architecture where everything is centralized, especially for wireless. Wireless nodes, they have to send in a one-hub communication to a node, to an access point, or to a base station, and then the base station can use wired network in the backbone to, to transfer my traffic. Okay? Um, the mesh network is different. So, um, so even if, the, if, if we have 802.11, 802.11 is Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi uses the standard with the number 802.11, B or G or A. Maybe some of you are familiar with this already, since you have at least wireless routers at home and so on. Um, <clears throat> So even if two nodes, even if I'm ha at home and then I'm trying to send uh, 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 traffic or a send a file from my laptop to a workstation next to it, okay? So I have to go through the wireless router, which may be in the other room. But all the traffic has to flow through a, the wireless router. So that's what we mean by centralized architecture. In mesh network, if we use ad hoc communication, then my laptop can communicate directly to the, to, the, uh, to the workstation without having to go through the wireless router. Okay? And if I need, I can take it even further and send through two wireless links or three wireless links or four wireless links and so on to increase the range and to, uh, to support uh, uh, multiple nodes communicating together. Then the fact.
This is very, very simple, very basic, okay? Type. We see the implication of this simple idea. This is a very simple idea. Instead of communicating to an infrastructure, okay, let's communicate directly. There is a uh, significant implication based on that, which we will study in that time. So, nodes are comprised of mesh routers and mesh clients. We'll see the difference. The difference is actually is, is a little bit gray. Uh, it's, not, it's not very concrete, okay? Uh, so, in fact, one device can work as a client or as a router when it comes to mesh networks. We'll, we'll talk about it. So each node operates not only as a host, but also as a router. So that's one first implication, is that nodes in the past, they know how to communicate to only one node, which is the infrastructure node. That's it. So they don't have to have the concept of routing, because it's, they are sending to one node, right? But now, the implication of this is that I'm saying that uh, there is a node here, wants to send to another node here, and there is some wireless nodes here and there, right? Since we're not going to, we're not going to talk about infrastructure here anymore, these nodes are wireless nodes. They are one day wandering around, maybe in a mall or something, and then this sender wants to send to this receiver some traffic. So now it needs to have the intelligence that, okay, I can send it through this node, and then through this node, this node, and, and then send it to the receiver. Doesn't this remind me of Napster? In a way, yes. Like peer-to-peer, -peer, and then I need to make sure that my file is, will be delivered to the other side, and then there is some kind of routing happens in, in the application level though. Here we're talking about lower, or lower level in the network layer, yes. Um, or I can send it this way and then this way and whatever. I, I have multiple rules. So the node now needs to be intelligent enough to understand how to route information. So talking to infrastructure, I didn't have to have this knowledge, but now there is one implication that I need to now understand routing. I need to know how to route my information. Okay? So that's, that's a, a very important uh, thing that, uh, that needs to be taken care of when we talk about wireless mesh networks. So each node is not only a simple client that it sends to an infrastructure and forget about it. No, now the node has to work as a route, which means that each node has to be Consider it to others. I need to not only worry about my own traffic, but I'm like any other node in the network. I can send my own traffic or I can send others traffic. I can relay others traffic. What, what applications are you Tons of applications. We'll talk about them. Tons of applications. Okay. So, <clears throat> so each node operates not only as a, as a host, but as a router as well, forwarding packets not of not necessarily of its own, but maybe for others, okay? A wireless mesh network is dynamically self-organized. So now, each node, well, because these nodes might actually, maybe, potentially move. So at any point in time, a wireless mesh node comes into the picture. So all the nodes automatically have to reorganize themselves that, well, now I have one node, one extra node, which did not exist before. So I need to learn, I need to make my routing mechanism learn that there is another way of sending information through that, that extra node. So the network has to keep reorganizing itself based on some nodes getting into the scene or some nodes getting out of the scene and so on. So the nodes have to be highly self-organized, okay? Because now that all the nodes are wireless, I don't have to build an infrastructure. So I can potentially put like a workstation or sorry, a laptop here and open it. Connect this laptop to the mesh network. Now we have an extra node. We have to reorganize ourselves to accommodate this extra node, okay? This extra node needs to send information, needs to receive information, needs to act as a relay, needs to act as a router, all of a sudden. 
one of the things, one of the aspects is that, well, not necessarily uh, I have to worry about location. What I, what I need to worry about is the, is the learn of, uh, is, uh, sorry, is the range of communication. Do I have wireless range to communicate with this node? If the answer is yes, then I have a wireless link to that node. Hmm? How, is that How is that detected? Right. right. Yes. Simply through each node, when it comes to the picture, this node needs to send some, yes, some signals to say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm alive. Right? So other nodes will say, oh, okay, I'm receiving your, your, your signal. This means that you are in my range. Okay. So next time I will learn that you are, you are here. And as long as this node is sending this broadcast, then it's alive. If it stops doing that for a certain period of time, then I consider that it's dead. It's like a server working on Yes, so it's like a server. And that's why wireless has so much overhead, because you have to... It's not like wire. A connection can be detected easily. You're connected, you're there. You're not connected, you're not there. No, wireless is... You're not, you don't have direct connection, so you have to tell others, I'm alive. You have to always keep uh, 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 saying I'm alive, yes. So that's an overhead that you didn't have to do before. Uh, okay, so, so the, the benefit of this is that you can potentially extend the range, okay? And actually, one to answer your question, one of the very important applications is that in remote areas, in very remote areas, uh, because building an infrastructure in remote areas is somehow cumbersome and it's not, it's not feasible in remote villages, for example. So we use these mesh nodes uh, uh, to extend the range and have the remote villages to have access to the internet through deploying very cheap wireless mesh nodes. And by having multiple of these in different points, we can use the concept of multi-hop to extend the range and connect the remote villages without having to dig wires and... Okay, so that's one simple application. So a user finds a nearby user and hops through it. So that's the, that's the main idea. So um, it hops through the, all the neighboring nodes by first, I have to have a discovery process. Discovery process that each node has to tell me I'm out there. Then I learn, okay, I have this node and this node and this node. All these nodes I can communicate with, which means that I have to establish a virtual wireless thing between myself and all the neighboring nodes. A virtual wireless thing. It's not a wired link. It's not a, a physical link. It's just a virtual link. Okay? But this link has a different characteristics of the normal wired link, which we will talk about. It's not, it's not uh, 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 the same like the wired link. It has a, a totally different characteristics. So every user becomes a relay point or a router for network traffic. So now I can decide, for example, to create a mesh node with my friends in the mall and use it to exchange information using peer-to-peer -peer communication. So all of a sudden, my cell phone is not only a source of information. My cell phone can act as a relay to the traffic coming from other cell phones or from other devices. It is, it is, it is an example of this. Exactly. It is one example of this. Hotspots. But Hotspots uses a two-hop wireless communication, but not more than that, which means that your, your hotspot is your cell phone, is a centralized node that everybody connects to it. Then it uses like a bridge, another bridge of a wireless link to communicate with 3G or 4G or Wi-Fi to reach to the internet. But again, your phone communicates directly to the base station, and from that, you have the wired backbone, okay? So in that case, the hotspot, your cell phone acts as a router, okay? 
and everybody connects to the router and then from the router you read to the backbone so it's just two hub wireless communication but mesh network talks in general about multi hubs so you can have three hubs four hubs and even ten hubs okay to exchange the range even more but there is some implication there is some consequences that you have to eat to learn and you have to understand, which we will talk about. So mesh nodes consist of multiple wireless devices equipped with wireless cards. So again, we're not, we're not changing the technology completely here. If you don't know that even Wi-Fi, there is a mode in Wi-Fi called ad hoc mode. It's just that many people or maybe all people, they don't actually use it. Uh, we had we used to have one MPRP one of the MPRPs that we worked on here is building a mesh network in the College of Engineering And we have deployed 30 nodes in different locations here, and we have used Wi-Fi We would just activated the ad hoc mode in Wi-Fi ad hoc mode talks about peer-to-peer -peer communication directly with another wireless uh, device and We were able to build a mesh network very simple without digging any wires so it's, not, uh, so it's not that we replace the whole technology. So Wi-Fi itself supports ad hoc. You just have to reconfigure the network to use ad hoc through direct communication between one, mode, one node and another node, point to point, without having to go through the access point. So the only difference is that ad hoc, you communicate with another wireless node. You don't communicate with the access point. No, 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 the ad hoc is just a mode of communication. It's, it's not a separate protocol. Ad hoc is just a mode of communication that allows two nodes to communicate point to point without having to connect to the access point. Okay? But the protocol is still Wi-Fi. Okay? So 802.11 is uh, 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 the... Um, the they, they can be you know, uh, set up as mesh nodes on the rooftop or something like this. So you can have one mesh node on the roof of a building, like heavy routers on the roof of, of a building, and another uh, machine or another mesh node on another roof of, of another building. And all of a sudden, you can communicate in ad hoc mode without having to connect to cellular network and infrastructure or base stations. You can simply deploy these mesh nodes and have them to communicate ad hoc without connecting to the infrastructure. And this is sometimes useful if you have, for example, if, you, uh, if, if deploying uh, infrastructure nodes is not feasible or too expensive or, uh, or maybe you, you are in a disaster uh, situation, it's not easy to build this infrastructure. Or maybe you have the infrastructure, but it's destroyed. So you can easily have one mesh node here and one mesh node here. They communicate together. You don't have to have any digging wire. You don't have to dig wires or anything. You just have the mesh nodes deployed. They communicate directly together without the infrastructure. I just want to make sure that the ad hoc mode is not really an enabler of mesh. It just allows two players to communicate, but it does not relate. So exactly. It's not well, really Relaying, yeah, relaying is another story. Relaying is another story. So uh, the ad hoc mode allows two nodes to communicate together. Okay? So if, if, your, uh, uh, if your node communicates to another node uh, and then they use ad hoc, then the communication will happen. Now, if you want to have multiple hops, you, you have to use ad hoc between this node and another node, and then your, your traffic will follow through all these nodes until it reaches to the app. So what happens is that ad hoc allows two nodes to, uh, 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 to, to, to communicate, right? But then what will happen is that when, when does this traffic stop? That's that's good way of under, of of of, uh, of, uh, of describing it. But actually, our 
our criteria for uh, reaching to the receiver is using a destination address. Okay? So if a node receives a traffic, then it compares. Does the destination address match my own address? If the answer is no, then I will send it. Based on the routing table, I will check my routing table, and then I will send it to the next hub. Because I'm not the destination. Once a node finds that, okay, the address matches my own address, then stop. Even if I have ad hoc communication with other nodes, because there has, there, there, there has to be a criterion based on which you stop. Otherwise, the, 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 the packet may actually circulate in the network forever. So our criterion to stop is by matching the address. Okay. So as we said, wireless mesh nodes uh, or wireless mesh networks consist of two types of nodes, mesh routers and mesh clients. The, the difference, as I said, is gray. Okay, Clients are usually the source of initiating the communication, and usually you have to connect to a router or with another client as a destination. Okay? Um, a router is usually like, like the hotspot. A router serves multiple clients. Okay? So multiple clients, they communicate with a router. The router usually has a complete knowledge about the entire network. The client doesn't. The client knows only that it can communicate with this next hub. That's it. But this next hub should be a router that takes this and forward it to the backbone of the network using its complete knowledge about the network. The client will not have a complete knowledge about the network. An example is, again, a very simple and, and, um, and small scale example is what you have mentioned regarding hotspot. Okay? So, I use my, uh, my cell phone as a hotspot. So, my cell phone in that case acts as a router, as a wireless router. Okay? All nodes they connect to, to, to my cell phone, and my cell phone knows how to forward it to the, to the backbone of the network using 3G or using Wi-Fi. It has complete knowledge about how to, to send this through the internet. The clients, they don't have direct access to the internet. So they all send to a router, which serves all the clients, and then the, the router will take this traffic and send it to the backbone. Okay? If if they communicate in ad hoc way, then yes. If all of them they communicate ad hoc, then yes. But there should be one main that connects to the backbone. That's exactly good. That's exactly right. Yeah, and you one main router at the end that I use to communicate with the internet. So I have a very large network. Hotspots, multiple hotspots. These hotspots, they communicate in ad hoc. Each hotspot may serve multiple clients, okay? But then these clients, if they want to have access to the internet, they have to go through one wireless router, which is connected by with the backbone of the internet. But do we call each one of them as a mesh router? Or a mesh we'll talk about that. We'll talk about it. Because they, 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 there, is different, uh, there, there are mainly two types of... Uh, mesh network architecture, which we will talk about. This one basically is what we call hybrid architecture. We will talk about that. So a wireless mesh uh, router contains additional routing functions, as we said. It has a complete knowledge about the entire network. Clients, usually, they don't have this knowledge. Maximum, they can know how to communicate with the next hub. That's it but they don't have complete knowledge about the network. Uh, usually, routers are equipped with multiple wireless interfaces. Again, I say usually, usually, because, again, the, the, as I said, the difference is really a little bit fuzzy. It's not 
it's not concrete, it's not dead in stone. There is some fuzziness. Um, so usually routers, they use multiple wireless interfaces, which of course perfectly matches our little guy here. Because this, this guy has a 4G, 3G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, it has multiple wireless interfaces. So the hotspot can be Bluetooth. It doesn't have to be Wi-Fi, right? So, and uh, Bluetooth, they can communicate to another cell phone and uh, in ad hoc. So, uh, uh, so usually routers, they uh, use multiple wireless interfaces. The fuzziness is that I can, I can use this device as a client, which means that by just activating a simple software that knows how to send to a uh, hotspot, right? In that case, it's a client, right? If, if, I, if, I, if I enable hotspot here, all of a sudden I'm a router. <laughs> See what I mean? So one device can have multiple hats. That's, the, that's, the, well, that's what I'm talking about. A wireless mesh not, uh, router can achieve the same coverage as a, a conventional router, but with much lower transmission. What, what does that mean? This means that if we have, we're saying that we have, we have uh, 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 two nodes, whether they are mesh routers or mesh nodes, doesn't matter. And we're saying that in the past, in the traditional types of network, we have to have like a, a base station and if these two nodes, they, uh, they want to communicate, they have to go through the base station, right? The base station is very far from, from any one of them. If they are next to each other and they decide to communicate in ad hoc, okay, then potentially they can use less amount of power because by increasing the power, you're essentially increasing the range, right? Because the, the wireless signal, depending on the power and depending on attenuation, it can travel through further distance, right? So if I decide to use ad hoc, then I can potentially reduce the amount of power that I use to, to get to this. And using the mesh concept, even if I want to communicate with another node which is far, okay, I can still use less power because I can send this through a, the, con the concept of multi hub right? So instead of increasing the power drastically to, to reach from here to here directly, instead I can just use one relay to, a, to reduce the power, okay? Um, and of course, uh, power and energy is becoming more and more uh, an issue for, for, uh, for wireless systems in general, uh, whether it's sensors or even base stations. Base stations now, uh, th there is a big issue about energy and some base stations, they use some generators and, and gas and whatever. So the issue of energy is, is, is very key. So by reducing the amount of power, this can actually accumulate throughout the time and make your uh, uh, your base station uh, energy efficient or less energy efficient and in that case you have to spend lots of money or have to spend money to, uh, 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 to, to recharge it and, and so on and so forth. Um, so <clears throat> these are just some examples of how wireless routers would look like in real life. These are like platforms that are developed. Most of them are proprietary. They are not like widely uh, uh, commercial. Um, but there are some commercial products that act as uh, 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 wireless mesh routers, uh, many of them. And uh, there are multiple vendors and, and, uh, and companies that developed wireless uh, mesh routers. Um, again, these routers can act as they can be connected using a wire to the infrastructure and act as an access point, or they can just use the concept of multiple wireless interfaces. They can uh, 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 act as a hotspot and 
uh, get the traffic from multiple nodes and then use another wireless technology uh, uh, to connect to the backbone. Or they can even use the same wireless technology. So Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi, but maybe they use different channels. So one channel to communicate with the, with the, with the, with the mesh clients or the nodes, and another channel to communicate with the backbone, with the, uh, with the mesh routers, with other mesh routers. Okay. So these are some examples. They use different types of, they use microcontrollers and different types of, uh, of processors and embedded uh, 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 microcontrollers and embedded software and, and things like that. You don't have to, of course, understand the, the details of this. These are just uh, some examples of uh, uh, mesh clients. Again, the, the fuzziness comes from the fact that I can decide to use one of these as wireless router. I can program it to act, to act as wireless router, especially, especially platforms like these, where, which are highly programmable. Like Intel Edison, we use Intel Edison here for some of our projects, even senior projects, uh, <clears throat> or at least we're planning to. So these are very portable, very small in size, form factor is very small, and uh, highly programmable. They are Linux-based, so you can connect them easily uh, and uh, SSH to these platforms and program it and, and uh, write like C++ code or even Java and things like that and run it on this uh, platforms easily. So I can, I can use this as a mesh router or as a hotspot or as a mesh client based on my different, my, my configuration. Yes, that's that. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Is that I can build my own mesh network to to have communication between the mesh nodes without being connected to the internet. I, I, I if I choose to, so I can have this uh, mesh. Uh, that's what we did actually in, in the MPRP project. We have we have just deployed some wireless nodes in different locations of the College of Engineering, and we connected some clients to them. And then you can communicate directly without having to interfere with the university network in any way. Okay? And if, if you choose to connect to the internet, you can just hook up one of these mesh nodes to the internet. One is enough. If you have two, it's, it's even better, and so on. Okay? But the good thing is that now I don't have to have an infrastructure. I can easily have these wireless nodes, put it in one office, and then open it to have other nodes connecting to it. So I don't have to have any infrastructure. I don't have to dig wires or anything. Yes, but I need the internet. You need it? You still need the internet. You still need to wait? Suppose that I get the internet. Mm -hmm. Suppose that I, you're saying that you didn't... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you want to communicate locally, like, for example, uh, share some files, uh, print. So you can, you can do these things without having to connect to the internet. If you want to connect to the internet, it's still fine. Okay, so just connect one of them with the access point, the only one, okay, and have access to the internet if you like. Okay. Um, so these uh, mesh clients are, th there is like the, the, of course, some of you are familiar with RFIDs or some like passive wireless nodes that uh, they can have like a tag or, uh, um, so you can just read one number from these wireless nodes, and usually these wireless nodes are passive. They don't have to, to even have a battery. They are wireless nodes. Just you, you can just, from the wireless signal, you can read a number from it. It's just a tag. They don't have to even have a, 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 a battery. So they don't have to have power, power source. They don't have to have uh, any like complicated antennas and stuff. Just from the wireless signal, you read a tag, and these are RFIDs. These are very cheap, and uh, uh, <clears throat> so, like one example to this are the cards that we use electronically. So from these, you can just send wireless signal. It comes back with a tag with a number, so you know the ID of that uh, of that chip, of the chip on it. That's it. Okay. 
Um, so these are, we call these wireless clients because of course these will not be capable of routing or, or anything. They are just passive devices. But really clients can have some... Mm. Lala, but RF, RF means that even from, from, you don't have to really swipe it. It's just wireless. So you can just get it close to, like NFC, like the, if you know, uh, um, you can just get it close to a specific um, reader. It reads, it reads some information from the car. Which is like when you get, when you get, when you enter the parking, you don't have to really swipe it. You, you can just get get it closer. And this is this is one example of an RFID. So there is like a a chip that that's why we don't have battery on the card, right? It's just for the wireless signal. It, it goes through the the card. It reads one ID of that card, and then it authenticates this through the server. And all it needs to do is just to read an ID, a specific ID from that card. So in that case, you don't need to have a battery, and the lifetime of this is, is just uh, infinite, and it's just unlimited, because you don't have to have a battery. But these are passive devices. These are not smart devices. You cannot get much information from it. Once we were in a conference in Chinese, and they, they used to call something, and on your... Yes, yes. Yeah, that's an RFID. Yes, that's an RFID. But in that case... Um, there is, a lim uh, there is a limitation in the range, of course. It has to be um, uh, a very, li the range is, is very limited. And, you, and again, you still need to have a reader. The reader has to be an intelligent device that sends the wireless signal and then reads something from it. Okay, so the reader itself is like a heavy device. But the RFID is just one example of a client with a very minimum level of intelligence, it doesn't have, it doesn't send any traffic. Um, that's one example. Uh, the most common platforms really that are really highly programmable are these two. This is the Raspberry Pi and this is the Intel Edison. And these are just emerging now and many people started to use them. They are highly programmable, they are Linux based, so they are easy. Uh, to program and develop programs on and uh, uh, <clears throat> you can have they have microcontrollers they have this is like a small PC really and uh, you can have multiple wireless technologies running on these platforms you can have Wi-Fi Bluetooth and Zigbee all together in, in this small uh, uh, platform so you can, you can potentially do lots of things using these small platforms. Okay? So, uh, so I think we'll stop here, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll continue next time. Um,